Yep, our eighth uh, SEC series, uh, Ole Miss comes to town. Uh, it's good to be back home after two weeks on the road. So, um, kind of control our own destiny if we still have a chance and interested in playing our best baseball down the stretch and a chance to reach the tournament um, this week versus Ole Miss, next week versus Missouri. Um, there's teams that we're competing for, for for those spots. So this is a very important weekend here on the Plains. But I guess you talked about hey, having some, you got, got the teams you're kind of fighting with right in front of you. Does that make this, I mean, obviously they're all big, but these next couple of weeks are, are faster than four now. Yeah, it keeps, uh, keeps the team, the coaches, the fans, everybody still engaged and fighting for something and playing for something that's right in front of you. So um, you don't completely control your own destiny, but, but a chance to continue to, uh, to stay in the fight, a chance to keep earning opportunities that we've been able to get the last few years that are still in front of us and trying to trying to make that happen. Check check one two. That's it. It's just the last couple of weekends with, with what you guys have been throwing out there with the starting rotation. It looks like there's been progress and improvement. Just, I guess, what have, what have you seen out of out of those guys on the mound the last couple of weekends in SEC? Well, I feel like they've given us a chance. I feel like the last two series, uh, every game we've had a chance to to be successful. Um, and, and so I think this will be the third or fourth week with really this rotation intact. Uh, I think it's good again for another weekend where the lefty starters match up pretty good. I think Bauman and, and Myers, hopefully, we, we think from pre preparation, can, can match favorably and be competitive uh, this weekend. So that's exciting. And I, I thought that, um, you know, uh, the, the start Watts had game one was ar definitely his best and arguably one of the best. Him and Myers, I think Myers a week before going six weeks, uh, six innings and start for a seven inning game. And then Watts having nine strikeouts, no walks. Um, yeah, I, hopefully they can solidify us these last three weeks if we're talking about making a move and getting to the point of just getting the game or playing competitive ball. It seems like with our pitching, we went non-competitive to competitive. Uh, still getting heart broke a little bit, but maybe that's a step you got to make to get on the right side of things and start really having a chance to consistently win every day. So. Hopefully we've taken that journey and, and that's what that would produce uh, these last three weeks is these guys being consistent, staying in there and giving us a chance to, uh, to win uh, these last three series starting this one for sure. Brian? Uh, yeah, update on that guy. How's he doing? Is there a chance he plays? And how about Bobby Pierce too? Yeah, we're, um, you know, Bobby's been on there. It's just been whether he can swing or not. Bobby did have two at bats. Uh, with it being exam week, uh, we did a Tuesday, not having the midweek game. We did a five-inning inner squad out here to get some pitchers some work, and definitely like Pierce and uh, Irish and at bat. So they both participated. Um, I would think 100% uh, Irish would be in there. Uh, what capacity um, could be from a, a DH standpoint? His most recent challenge is coming off an ankle. He's running well. And, swinging the bat well. I even think he's swinging it better than he did with his hands. So I think with more distance there being with the hand injury that, that Ike's good, it's just what he can do running around the ballpark on his ankle. Uh, Bobby did have two at bats, but did not participate on the field yesterday. So I still think there's some lingering. Hey, I fight through a couple at bats and then it cost me a day or two. So uh, I'm really hopeful. For, for Ike to be back in the lineup this weekend. Mason Maynard got back in last week. And uh, I think Bobby's day-to-day, -day, um, I think he'll definitely be on the 27, man. You just saw the last couple of weeks he's been in there defensively. Um, but but he, he could play in a game and, and could have a few at bats. I'm not sure you could expect to have him for the entire weekend. Uh, yes, obviously getting some of those guys back will help, but you talked about the pitching becoming more competitive, and as that starts to happen, I think you guys hit like below 200 in the last two two series. Is that 
frustrating that they not have that all be pieced together, kind of to have one thing get better and one regress at the same time? Well, I think that's part of the how you find where we're, where we're at as a team, just not getting enough wins in SEC play when we were swinging it pretty good. The, the pitching, the team just hadn't hooked up from a standpoint. We played four games last week, I think, without an error. Uh, but we, we, had, we had a starting lineup Saturday, and not to make excuses, just protection for the guys now that we've had taken on some of these injuries. These aren't just guys. These are three everyday pieces for us or expected to be everyday pieces and were everyday pieces. We had five guys in the lineup, starting lineup with less than 10 RBI, six guys with less than 100 bats for the entire season. So it's like uh, when we get one thing going, we've, we've had a challenge here. And when uh, the challenge gets better here, then we created a new challenge. And I, I just think that's why you've seen us not been able to, you know, capture a series, so to speak. Uh, we just haven't met at the same time. I think a few weeks back I was talking about, I just want to see our team play its best baseball. And good start to the season. We talk about the 18-4 and four versus the conference record, non-conference to conference. But, uh, you know, we, we, we played okay early. We talked about all the challenges going into SEC play that we would have to overcome. Uh, some of those became a reality. Uh, but the injuries positionally was not, it was horrible timing uh, for that to happen. Hopefully this weekend, if we can get guys back enough, then, then hopefully I'd like to – I'm still fighting for three weekends for us to play our best baseball. The positive have been, positives have been all these young guys getting some, some playing time. But, again, Lavar is now seven months off of the, that ACL surgery. You know, you just go around the field where we've been banged up. But, you know, Strickland and, and Kate Ballou is kind of leading us in some stuff right now offensively. Some of this will pay dividends at some point uh, down the road, especially with some of our pitching, the way Cam Tilly's throwing the baseball, um, Dylan Watts being in there now as a sophomore, that leads to something positive moving forward. Um, we found some, some anchors to hold on and some of these young guys that got experience maybe before they were supposed to. And uh, that'll help us at some point. So hopefully it's now. Uh, but nonetheless, whenever we get there, that'll that'll help us transition to, to get ready for next year for sure. Butch, you mentioned, you know, Kay, Kale Strickland being, being, being part of right. Having those guys, how much does that help to not have to throw Ike Iris back in where he's playing the position where you can slide into the DH role if you need to and you still feel good about those spots? Yeah, they've done a great, amazing job. Uh, Wright's really done some stuff for the bats. Uh, Strickland's been competitive with the bat. Been, been a lot of singles. Uh, Cooper Wright's had a couple of extra base hits, but I, I think that's why you see at the highest levels of baseball, man, if you can get 215 and, and catch great pitching and make pitching great because this whole thing's built around pitching that you have a job. And both of those guys have thrown the ball well. No matter if people haven't run on them or when they have, they've been successful, been able to throw those guys out. They've received our pitching staff really good. And really with a lot of this uptick with where we've gotten a little bit better on the mound, they've been behind home plate receiving it. So um, Strickland has a good advance feel as a defensive catcher and Carter Wright's a senior, but has the, the same type of feel. Those two guys have absolutely done an amazing job, especially defensively overall. Good. Well, you may have mentioned this before I uh, step in, but do you, do you approach each series here in the last three sort of like tournaments, sort of like little mini tournaments, that kind of approach that you talk about? Well, this is our postseason. I announced that two weeks ago, and that's in the same harmony with what you're talking about. Like, this is our postseason. So, I don't know if we got to go 72, 8, 1, or 9, and 0 um, to get to Hoover. It depends on others. And, and our hole's a little bit deeper than everybody else that we even feel like are in striking distance. So, uh, we, we know we have to play way above average baseball and try to hook it up. But, yeah, this is our postseason because nothing's guaranteed. So, it, it's land on it landed on us in the moment. And I don't think that's a problem or a, a poor message to send to a team. Uh, these guys are aware, they see everything out there. They they know this stuff before we even can speak it. We can just uh, speak it on our own terms to make sure we're all on the same page. But these guys know what's going on and what they're playing for these last three weeks. All right.
Yeah, uh, Mason Maynard looked a little rusty when he came back last weekend. Did you see him maybe a little bit sharper in the um, scrimmage on that Tuesday? It was, it was okay, about the same. Um, I just, I think we've all learned a lesson where we had three hand injuries, and it's different than other parts of the body because it's holding the bat, chasing the swing. And, um, you can just imagine, man, um, trying to put that thing through and, and contact hurts the most, or maybe even swing and miss hurts even more. Uh, but, but the timing, the, the swings were definitely affected. I can see it with Ike the first time going through it with the hand that it affected his at-bats. Mason affected his at-bats. Ike's on time because I think the hand's better and he had the ankle. So yeah, I think the ankle's a lot easier to deal with in other parts of the body than when it's the, the hand. So we'll, we'll be evaluating that closely because I think we have been reminded that the that, that hand's a, a tough one, and even though you can pull off a swing now, the timing and everything that, that's associated with that's a little more complicated and complex. Uh, going back to Dylan, uh, just for, for him to, to, you know, these past couple of weeks really kind of look like he's, he's settling into that starting role, but being a guy who, I mean, he came in as a Juco All-American, you know, as a, as a setup closer with league patches, what does he say about him that he's able to kind of shed the whole notion of like identity or role and, and just be malleable and, and go into that starting point. Yeah, I think he keeps building out too. So I thought last week was the first time he didn't look like a two-pitch reliever starting a game. And that's a tough challenge for the job and task that we asked him to do. Um, with, uh, you know, last week it was Tommy White and Jones right behind him, the two righties. Right before them was a lefty and right behind him was a lefty. And, I saw a lot of change-ups come into play. It's amazing how his uh, arsenal is even developing week in and week out. So that's what this will do for you. This league will absolutely sharpen you, develop you, and grow you as you're going through the journey. And I think I've seen that with Dylan to see it now. It's like, all right, now he's got three pitches going. Um, but shaping the, shaping the slider, um, we talked about Chase also his growth and development. A little bit more control and command came from being able to keep a fastball down and away. I thought Dylan's first couple of starts at fastball kind of would not stay in the lane and leap back to the middle and it would get a big swing off uh, by the opponent. Um, I think now he's like relaxed, not trying to overdo too much and allowing that baseball to stay in the lane. Um, not just throwing a good slider, but even when he gets up in the camp, being able to bounce the slider if he gets to that that out in front of account. So I'm just seeing him pitch more and more each week, and I want to see that continue. Um, I, I know you can have a challenge or two along the way, but uh, I'm seeing more arsenal, but I'm really seeing more pitchability come to the forefront now that he's being asked to, you know, not get us three to six outs, but turn a lineup over once or twice. And that growth's been fun to watch. Nice. Thank you.